What did you discover about each other through the process of, of this project, both the design and building of the building as well as making the film as father and son? Well, my parents got divorced when I was three. And so, um, you know, I've always been a little closer to my mom than my dad just because of, you know, us moving and logistics. Um, and I knew that, um, or I thought that designing this with him would, would improve our relationship, and I think it, it did. Um, and it's so funny, a couple of people came up to me after the Palm Springs showing of this at the, uh, what was that called? The American Documentary Film Festival. American Documentary Film Festival. And someone, and someone said, so in the film, you never say dad. It's always Dion. And that's so funny because in regular life, that's the only way I refer to, to him is dad. Um, except when I'm with someone else and we're talking about him, then I use his name. Um, and through that whole video, I say Dion because he's interviewing me. And even though it's Tavo, my, my, my good buddy since sixth grade, that, that other you know, part came out. But no, I really do love my father. And I think, as I mentioned in the film, one of the things that I uh, enjoyed most about this relationship was the fact that uh, I was able to engage Nick in the details, the finer details, which I had designed into the project, which so often get lost in the translation for whatever reason. And since we had so much time to work on this, uh, he was able to focus on, on these details and we would talk about them. He'd come over and I'd spend time in, the, in my studio and we'd, uh, we'd chat about it. And um, there were mistakes made, for example, and we figured out ways to work around those. And I pointed out to him the importance of how to correct the, either correct the, the mistake or add to it in some way to integrate it into the design. So to me, that was one of the most rewarding parts of it. And we, we enjoyed getting together. Our typical pattern was to play golf first in, in the morning, because we both play golf. There's a nine-hole course not far from our, our office. So we would meet and do that, and then later we would come back to the house and talk about the uh, various features of the, uh, of the project. And it did evolve over time. We kept adding and re revising. One of my favorite stories was the story of the spiral stairway, which you saw a couple of pictures of it. Um, nobody on the island had a clue how to do that. So we found, uh, on the mainland, we found a guy, was he from Germany, or where was he? Udo. Udo. Udo, yeah. And we got him to come over with his crew, and he welded this thing up and did everything uh, on, on the spot, and we, we were really pleased and happy with the result, which we wouldn't have been able to get any other way. So Udo was really uh, one of the heroes, unsung heroes of the of the project. There are many other aspects like that that we uh, enjoyed as well. I was going to say about your question about the dynamics between father and son, that was the really the uh, impetus for me in my original thought of doing this film, besides the obvious architectural legacy that goes without saying, um, was this how, did, how does the creative process happen in a tight-knit family unit like this, and of course Dion relating with his father Richard, and how those dynamics may or may not be similar to what these two have experienced together in this 10 year long saga. So um, the idea, by the way, behind this eight minute piece was we built a, what we had hoped to become a, a trailer for um, a larger piece that ultimately we hopefully someday we'll find a way to produce uh, a feature-length documentary about the other eight, nine uh, island projects of the Neutra practice. I'm just wondering, you were talking about the workers and really you had to work within the context of their environment and their skill set. I'm wondering if you taught them anything new, like innovations or ideas that you changed their paradigm on how they can do something. 
my dad designed this beautiful on the third building, on the, on the patio that became a third building, um, there was steps to a second floor in that building. Um, and he was like, let's cantilever all these stair treads. So we have this wall, this changing wall that's got all these 36 inch treads hanging off that are just floating in air. Um, and it's an incredible design, and there's nobody on the island that cantilevered anything like that. Um, and my, and my, uh, my contractor was really confident, and yes, I can absolutely pull this off, and kudos to Ivan Laura to pulling that off so nicely. And then, of course, my dad's like, are you going to put a railing on the outside edge of these treads? And I was like, no, let's not do, because, you know, code would absolutely, you couldn't ever have those treads without the railing on the outside. And we both knew that drama wise and, you know, ascending stairs, if you have a little bit of, I might fall, that's kind of a cool thing <laughs> sometimes. Um, so we're going to put the, we still haven't mounted this railing. Um, that's going to be on the wall, on the wall side. So it's, I've accepted a long time ago that this is not exactly a kid or pet friendly property. Enter at your own risk. The other, the other, the other point I might point out is that uh, typically on the island, we collect water because water is so rare. And we uh, typically you have a, a sloping roof, gutters around the edge, water runs into the gutters and you bring them down and you have a, a, a cistern in the basement area to collect the water. Uh, we uh, had an innovative idea instead of doing that, how about a flat roof and store the water on the roof as a surface. So when you look out in certain times you can see the ocean and then in the foreground, you see this water, which is in the, uh, on the roofs. So that was a complete uh, innovation that nobody had done on the island, to my knowledge, before. So you say we taught them something. I don't know. Maybe they learned a lesson from that or not. We'll see if somebody else emulates us. What was one wonderful takeaway or surprise that you've gotten from working with Ted? Mm. Here you go, Nick. Qu quick, and then we'll wrap up. Sure. I mean, mostly that's island time. <laughs> mostly that's the beauty and the curse. The people that live on the island love to talk about that because that's the speed they want to operate at. And it's the speed that you are forced to operate at. Um, and, and so I go through it every time I go down there. I slow down from LA speed to Roatan speed, and thank, you know, I'm grateful for it every single time, and it takes me a, a little different amount of time, a day or three, to adjust. And I'm, I always know when I'm back in LA, and I have adjusted back, because now I'm getting impatient with some driver. And it's, it's usually when I'm in the car. It's like, oh shit, I'm back again. <laughs> So that. Awesome. But thank, I want to say thank you to everyone who came, uh, guests and speakers, and we'll see you all in 2020. Thanks a lot. Thank you.